This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get techie. It is the Awesome Cast episode 425. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA. Hold on, I gotta move a Ninja Turtle out of the way so I can see my uh, screen. There we go. Uh, yeah, that's that's how we roll around here. Uh, but uh, with me on the line from Studio C, he is John Chichilla. He is a gadget guru over at Big Bank International Esquire. How you doing tonight, sir? Pretty good. How are you? All right, all right. Other than all the all the technical elements that we discussed before the yes. show, but that's for gold for you guys this week. Um, talking about some uh, stuff we're doing here in the studio and uh, some other things. So, but anyways, this is the Awesome Cast. You can check out everything at awesomecast.com. Email us at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Tweet us at awesomecast and find us on the Facebook page and group. The page is where we do the live stream every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. We are streaming other places on the Sorgatron Media social medias like uh, the Sorgatron Media Periscope and Twitch and Mixer on your Xbox and things like that. But of course, the chat room that we are paying attention to is over on the Facebook page for the time being so please if you guys uh can like the page over there uh <laughs> unless sorg delays starting the show hey we're live we're live baby uh but anyways yes the producer missy is back in the same time zone in the same room so if you hear any just anger in the background that's that's why because we're back to our old ways uh it's like she never left but also you can follow the facebook group for awesome cast where you have a lot of great discussion we have a lot of stories you guys have shared with us we'll be having throughout the day the the the, 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 the show ha the day the afternoon the evening whenever you're listening to this the week the also month. thank you to our streaming partners rivers edge pgh.com where they carry us every saturday at 9 a.m eastern time and our friends at the 405 media.com they are carrying us every weekday five days a week at 9 a.m pacific time noon eastern time so you can catch up the latest episode of the awesome cast is carried on there if you want to be part of the studio audience or if you want to uh get access to this audience with uh, some advertising opportunities hit up producer missing at awesome cast at sorgatron media.com we got a lot of new uh new friends that we'll be talking about during the course of this show thanks to our friends over the yacht jagoffs holiday guide but we'll get into that later in the show thank you to our patreon supporters patreon.com slash awesome cast uh our friends at the coffee club five dollar level matt weller and john dickey de gore uh they'll be getting some of the extra kind of tech talk Actually, 10 minutes of tech talk that we did here before the show. And the fan of the show, dollar level, Michael Fedor uh, as well this week. Uh, if you guys uh, get some value out of the show, want to contribute and get some extras and shout outs for it, hit us up at patreon.com slash awesomecast. And we really appreciate the support literally helping us keep the lights on and, and buying new light bulbs, actually. So it's literally keeping the lights on even more so than usual here soon. Uh, but let's get into our awesome things of the week. And uh, Chilla, I want to go with yours first here because I got to get a kick out of this headline here. What's going on? So, so <clears throat> if you've seen my Facebook from over the weekend or you've seen Twitter, um, you've probably realized that the new uh, uh, Avengers trailer dropped on friday mm -hmm. um shortly after the avengers trailer dropped people started tweeting nasa oh so no. if, if you're not familiar with the beginning of the avengers trailer and hopefully this isn't a spoiler because it's just part of the trailer tony is stuck on a spaceship trying to leave titan he's run out of food like three or four days ago and he will run out of oxygen tomorrow morning. He's sending a message to Pepper Potts. Um, 
pretty much telling her and informing her this and that when he drifts off, he'll be dreaming of her. It's always been her, blah, 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 blah. So, yes, people took to Twitter and started hammering the NASA account, asking them to help save Tony. (laughs) (laughs) To the point where NASA got fed up with it and actually tweeted and said, please quit asking us to save Tony Stark, which was like prodding the bully (laughs) in school because then the internet just went crazy um not only tweeting nasa but tweeting spacex elon musk um the uk space center like if you if you merely search nasa mr stark on twitter nasa um, mr stark yeah just look up yeah nasa space mr space stark you there will just be a flurry of of tweets at NASA and at different places. Some saying, Hey, Elon Musk, can you help since NASA won't? Um, so I merely tweeted on Saturday morning, um, searching quote, NASA, Mr. Stark and quote has made my morning. And I have had 3000 hits and 45 engagements with my tweet alone, just saying, hey, this made my day, (laughs) which it's funny because I had a flurry of likes and comments and retweets on it on Saturday. Then I had a couple more. And people are still obviously finding out about this and joining in on the fun. And I just keep getting notification after notification. (laughs) I love they're responding to like, here, we're returning to the moon, preparing to go beyond Mars. We are going. We are NASA. And somebody's response Stop everything and rescue Mr. Stark. <laughs> angry face, angry face. He is the only one who's going to save the entire universe. Yeah, yep. Yeah, people like, reference the 50% that are left. I mean, it's... <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a bring him home with uh, his face on the uh, the Martian um, <laughs> poster. Uh, that's pretty amazing. Uh, this is amazing. I love it. Uh, and a lot of people have screen capped uh, the the response. We would like to request every one of you stop messaging us about rescuing Mr. Stark, Mr. Stark from space from at NASA. Um, somebody's got a, a great almost comic Sansy font on their phone, by the way, uh, who screen capped that. Thank you for that. That's going around everywhere. Oh, wait, yes, but nobody can hear you. I can hear. Okay, what's up? Oh no, they miss Oh no, the everyone should have a space according to producer Missy. Uh, <laughs> they're, they're scientists, they're not English professors. Exactly. It's a it really it, brilliance is not across the board, okay? <laughs> so this is great. Dude, this is awesome. But if if you get a chance like you could literally sit there for half hour minimum just scrolling mm. these these different comments that have been made. So it's, it's a, it's a lot of fun. And then I feel like with, with all of the seriousness and, and anger and angst and debate that's out there on the, on the social, uh, the social sites, I just feel like this added a nice light mood to the normal stuff I see. It's amazing. I got another one. How about another throwback chiller for my awesome thing? Um, sure. This is something that I, I don't know if I was aware of um, this this event happening. Um, so this is the uh, 50 year anniversary. And, and I heard a good discussion about it on, on uh, Twitter this week. Um, and of course, the Engadget article uh, came up and I actually watched about a good half hour or so of the uh, video today for the first time. But uh, 50 years ago was the mother of all demos, which foretold our tech future, according to Engadget. It was uh, Doug Engelbart. He gave the world the first taste of hypertext, a mouse, networking, and more. I was enthralled by him showing me his shopping list, for instance, on this. Um, But no, it was it really. So this is 1968. And they had a lot of these concepts they were working on, including the mouse, uh, they were they were talking about on the podcast I was listening to about how he even he even mentions on it uh, and actually I think this was also I don't know this uh, Daily Tech News show may have also talked about this. Uh, There's a clip about he's like, well I don't know why we call it a mouse we just do, and it kind of stuck 
And now, you know, 50 years later, we still call it a mouse. We haven't come up with a better name for it. So there was a mouse pointer. There was text. There was, you know, the idea of linking documents together. Of course, you know, they didn't really have, you know, for some of it, names and, and terms that, um, you know, that we, we call it today. And, and the, it was positing the idea of what if we all had this computing power on our desktop to do our day-to-day tasks with, you know, like we do now, basically what we do now, right? Um, th- this is, in, in, and, you know, one group talking about how this really didn't even happen realistically as a whole as they discussed it until about 1990-ish, right? Right? Like they have yep. like a visual interface with a mouse, you know, I guess late 80s maybe you could say um, that was, you know, had the hypertext and the internet. They talked about um, a networking that, that does sound like he's describing kind of a proto World Wide Web internet kind of situation. Um, but it's it's really wild. And, and they said there's also parts of this this presentation that they showed off that people are still trying to figure out how to implement. And I haven't gone into that stuff, uh, but uh, but no, the, the, like really, it was just kind of like telling the future of what has become computing, and of course, that's come to like that much has come to like our phones and our mobile devices as well um, to you know grow that even more. But uh, no, just really, really interesting to see something that far back, you know. And this is again, I think they had um, he was talking about how um, at and I believe this is is this MIT. Uh, I'm sorry, Stanford. Stanford Research. No, no, no. This is this is later. What he's talking about this. I'm pretty sure there's an MIT thing, if I'm not mistaken. Chilla. Um, it was Stanford. It was working Stanford. at the Stanford okay. Research Institute. Okay. The S- SRI is Stanford Research Institute. So this this video is an hour and forty minutes. An long. hour and forty minutes, and a lot of it, like sometimes the text is like over his face. Sometimes they do like kind of a side by side kind of video and everything. The entire thing is on YouTube. Oh, it's in, and it's at the about the forty, the thirty-seven minute mark where uh, I left off on it. And again, like the guy is talking about, like pulling up files and copy and paste and and and, and undoing basically a command Z kind of situation. Um, no, this is this is pretty crazy. It's 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 pretty cool. Again, this is a this is super geek, guys. <laughs> I don't know if everybody's going to get the entertainment out of it that I might be, uh, but uh, it was pretty cool. And fifty years ago. Uh, this week. So if you want to go check that out, uh, the video that you're looking for is the mother of all demos presented by Douglas Engelbart, 1968. That seems to be the proper full video of that. So, Hey, you know what else is awesome there? Chilla. I don't know, but I'm sure you're going to tell me. I'm going to tell you it's our friends at Pittsburgh things.com Pittsburgh themed apparel and that, uh, part of the, you jag off holla, day guide that's going on right now in the month of december here pittsburgh things is uh simply that berg best in apparel including t-shirts uh including unique garments like dresses yoga leggings even socks featuring the pittsburgh skyline uh, and and uh i, I don't shot I, I don't know chilla maybe maybe i want to get some of those socks too uh consider it steady stitches in a wide variety of options Perfect for stocking stuffers and giftables for the Yinzer on your list. Uh, Tony uh, Landolina designed each piece on the site. Check it out at PittsburghThings.com. I love these ads. I get to work on my Pittsburghese accent a little bit more, Chilla. These are per- perfect for like we do gift baskets and the gift basket has to have like a theme. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to use these next year and do like a whole Pittsburgh theme. Uh-huh. Because like, we do, we do it for all the different families that come in from like Baltimore, um, Detroit, Nashville, um, et cetera, in the family. Mm-hmm. I, I could definitely find use for a lot of these as, as like a, a multitude of, of gifts in a basket that represent Pittsburgh, especially the Yinzer mug, the, the periodic table of elements. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I got the shirt up here or a pierogi whisperer or jag off mode on uh resting bridge face um <laughs> i wish i was full of pierogi instead of existential dread yeah i like that i like that that's a very millennial kind of thing um no a lot of cool a lot of cool stuff going on there pittsburgh slippery slippy when wet 
<laughs> uh, go check it out, PittsburghThings.com. I think we discover a new thing every time uh, we go over there uh, to see that. So thank you to Pittsburgh Things and the Jagoff Holla Guide supporting the awesome cast. Chilla, let's go see what our friends over on the awesome cast uh, Facebook group have going on. Um, less than awesome. I don't really want to get too deep into it, but I know there's been a lot of stories about the uh, Huawei uh, financial chief getting arrested in Canada. Uh, so I know everybody seems to be talking about that, but I guess an update of that, I was just seeing before we got in here, uh, apparently the, the Canadian government has liberated her. It's a weird thing that's going on here. Like the, the tech, I, Chilla, I'm getting tired of my tech news being like mixed up with the real world news a little bit. So I missed. So I saw this, but I didn't get to read it on my way home from work today. So what exactly did Apparently she do? That I'm aware of, and I think, and, and I'm sure new new details have come out since where I heard about it on the on my round of podcasts the last couple of days. Um, apparently, they picked her up in Canada. She's the daughter of, I believe, she's the daughter of the Huawei uh, CEO, who was the former Chinese military officer that everybody's so concerned about. And why we think that it's going to be completely insecure to have Huawei devices in their networking and everything. Um, so I, I think it was based on a they violated a trade blockade or, or of some sanction sort. With sanction Iran. with Iran, right? And it's um, I mean, there's a question on whether they could, you know, you know how much this was damaging to their business and everything. So they went ahead anyways. And I guess when they were they were they were attempting to extradite her to the U.S. I don't know. It's uh, it, it's 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 big world news. This is a bigger thing, and uh, but uh, Brian Crawford shared it with us, so I wanted to bring it up at least momentarily, at least an awareness that something like this is going on. And again, this is kind of more on like the news channels, I think, than our tech news these days as well. So, um, also bringing it back around to something a little bit different. Uh, Brian, you know, Brian's always experiment experimenting with things. Excuse me. Um. Especially in the bathroom. Especially in the bathroom, as we can <laughs> talk about here today. So um, he says he's been trying to bring Alexa into the bathroom. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, so he can listen to music without the phone and order uh, bathroom supplies as he recognizes he is running low. The device, for very little money, has allowed him to uh, attach his dot uh, to his bathroom wall through the plug and has solved his problem. And, and the device we're talking about is the um, outer the outer wall mount for a dot second generation and other home assistants. Um, so it, it appears to be just a hanger that when you plug your little square, like the typical kind of USB square in, it hangs from that. And I think the plug may be actually part of it. And then like that's where your uh, Amazon Echo goes. Uh, hanging on the wall under the cert on the thing. This is pretty cool, man. I wish I had internet at home so I could like hook all these things up. And cause this would be perfect for the kitchen as well. Currently unavailable, it says. Oh no! Wait, maybe it's got like other colors available or something. But the black one's not available. Is the white one available? Oh no! He he got the rest. Oh. He got the last of oh. them. No, the one. If you get the, are you on the two pack or the one pack? That might be it. I'm on the two pack. You saying they're out of two packs? They're oh, out I of can two get packs. a one pack. There you go. But you can order two one packs. So I can only put an Echo in one of my bathrooms. No, you just order two of the one packs. What? That's insane. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, no, no, go check it out. Look out the outlet. The outlet wall mount. This is by Wally. W A L I. Over on uh, Amazon.com if you want to check it out. Thanks, Brian, for sharing that, too. Uh, let's see. We also have from um, Dave Potter. So this is something that they were discussing when the new Apple Watches were coming out. But they have finally released the E, not EKG, ECG, which is like an EKG, but not as, um, you know, not as precise, right? So the ECG adapter is out, and uh, according to this, it, it, so it's a it, is it a regular heart rhythm notification available today on the Apple Watch? I did see there was an update from my Apple Watch, so I didn't know how much it helps me with my uh, Series Three. This is for the Series Four watch, so if you picked one of those up in the last few months, um, and again, this is a big addition for 
the health aspect of the Apple Watch, right, Chilla? Yeah, and this isn't, I think you referenced it as an adapter. This isn't an adapter. No, 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 no. I think it's, wait, how does this, how does this say this? You literally, you literally, so you know. No, I the, did. I'm um, did. sorry, crown. I misspoke. I misspoke. Yeah. Uh, you hard. literally take your finger and you put it on the crown of the watch mm-hmm. like this, Boy, and it sure. will do an ECG. Okay. Which it was interesting because they didn't launch with this, mm-hmm. and they really didn't discuss not launching with it. But it will save this data down to the health app. It'll save it down to the device. And I think there's a way to easily forward all of that information to your um, physician or healthcare provider. Yeah, I think there um, is some. The, so if, if the provider does it, I think there are instructions to to offload that to them. Yep, I know. I know someone with a heart condition, and he was very interested in this and uses it. Um, he actually bought the watch for this, upgraded this watch for that primary reason, mm-hmm. and they've also. Was there someone on Good Morning America? There was someone already. There's been numerous people that have already said this has saved their lives or helped them realize that they had something irregular with their with their heart. So I'm mm-hmm. um, pretty darn cool. Uh, Dave's in the chat room. And he's actually updating us on some of our questions. First, um, the ECG versus EKG is actually the same thing. Uh, the K is the 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 K cardiograph is. Um, um german and that's what they use in ekg so it's the same word it's just this is american it gives eyes, german it's it's in metric uh, yeah there you go it's <laughs> something like that and he also says uh they just they it just spits out a pdf that you can email them as far as the uh the information to send to your doctor okay so that's but you i thought i thought it saved it into the health app too you can export but I think, it as a PDF, I, yeah the health I, app can I, be exported so and yeah. as something I'm sure they can read and, and, and deal with. So, um, no, that's cool. I, that's, that's really kind of making this thing far more capable in the long runs, too. Oh, boy. Giffy. Gotta love Giffy, guys. Uh, Dave also, uh, of course, our friend from, he's a, with the uh, Tiny Shutter podcast. So, uh, he's going to hit us up with everything. Um, iPhone of uh, photo, of course. So this is one, the Giphy app, we know it for, you know, some keyboards and GIFs and, and things like that. But it, they're going to integrate true depth camera for personalized stickers and add a universal keyboard. Um, I thought Giphy already had something of a key, like a Giphy co- keyboard as well. Um, according to them, it says the updated Giphy app now comes with a GIF keyboard extension, which features their new sticker maker. And you can easily find, share, and create GIFs and stickers on your favorite apps. And stick them in, of course, like Facebook Messenger, Snap. Really? Snap? It's just Snap now? You don't ch- call it Snapchat? Instagram and uh, all, all the other ones. So Snap Snapchat's too many letters. Yeah. Yeah, we can't. Too, too, too many words. We can't go that deep with it, can we? So S- Sooner it'll be just SNP. SNP? But you'll still pronounce it Snap. Yeah, because it's short. <laughs> <laughs> so uh but no they so that's that's the so that's with the true depth camera system so just that so it's integrating because i mean usually this is something that it has to be built into snap quotation mark snap jeez anyways uh what else do we have here uh mario kart there is tickets to compete and it is from riz uh there are tickets now to compete in a live action mario race in florida this is didn't this just get shut down in in Japan? Somebody somebody was just kind of doing this. Um, this is from I don't know. This is from FloridaMemes.com. So, <laughs> but apparently, um, yeah, they're going to do a, a, it in Miami. It's on sale. It's one of the sixteen cities hosting the Mushroom Rally race across the United States. Do you have to bring your own car, or is it like they That's they right. provide the? Uh... The carts slated for June first, twenty eighteen. Participants get to dress up as their favorite Mario characters. Costumes are provided at the event. It, really, you don't even have to bring a costume. And then you zoom around a custom track, collecting stars to win prizes. This is, uh, I imagine, this means that our iOS game is going to be out far before this as a marketing ploy. So, I mean, I, I wonder if this is kind of a build off of like you know the people that were kind of jacking the Mario Kart look for um for this in japan 
And we're like, hey, that's a good idea. Let's do that. Yeah, let's make it work. So. <laughs> you you do have to be at least 58 inches tall, but shorter than six foot seven and under 300 pounds. Well, I think I. Okay, let's go to Florida, sir. Let's do it. Sign me up. Because you can win a trip to Las Vegas for the national championship. But I already have to go to Miami. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know about that. All right. Uh, we have a couple other ones. Uh, these are actually from Missy, who's right here. Right here with us. Gorilla Goodies Hipster Nativity Set is one thing that she shares with us. Uh, let's see. We got a 100% uh, organic uh, cow. We have a sheep with a sweater. We have a guy on an iPad, and your three wise men are Amazon delivery people on Segways. Oh, and they're taking a selfie with baby Jesus. I actually kind of like this. <laughs> have you? I am totally addicted to the Amazon holiday commercial, and I can't even remember what the song is now, but the boxes are like singing the little song. No, I'm not. I oh, haven't it's seen amazing. This Again, it's totally... I don't, I'm mostly I, I see the commercials when. I watch Monday Raw, and that, that actually has been less happening less lately. So, um, but no, it was a really cool, really cool kind of setup there. Check out the link in the um, in the show notes. And also, she shares this is from Gabrielle Rivadanera. I think I mostly didn't butcher that. This is a VR look at a Van Gogh painting. It's kind of that, um, it, it, it's definitely one of those fisheye lens kind of uh, moves through. And I don't think this is, this is like a video. This isn't like the, you know, 360, like you can move around in it. And all I've seen is, is like kind of the video version of this, right, Missy? So, uh, yeah, it's like you're going through like the little town in the Van Gogh painting. It's pretty cool. They look like little little cardboard boxes in there, too. So, you can check that out in the link. For you guys on the audio too. So you have a homework. You have lots of homework for this one. Chilla, are you eating healthy? I try to. Uh, we all try to. We all try to. And I was just uh, driving by uh, and checked out where the location was last night. I was stalking our our, our uh, sponsors the other day. Uh, but uh, our friends up at Core Life Eatery, healthy and never tasted so good. Uh, again, another part of the Jack Off Holiday Gift Guide this season and a great gift idea for uh you know people that want to uh get healthy this season um of course you can check them out up in uh up on mcknight road and uh the core life eatery at the block out norway brings clean healthy and great tasting foods on to everyday meals with hearty bowls featuring greens grains and bone broths all ingredients are free of GMOs, trans fats, artificial colors, sweeteners, and other artificial additives. It's fresh, fit, and fine for any time of the day, especially during the holiday season. Shop till you drop. Make us your make them your eatery your eating stop. Visit them at the block at Norway Lower Level CoreLifeEatery.com, and you can't miss them. It's the big it's the big new um, kind of uh, shopping plaza. That's up across from the Giant Eagle, and um, there's a couple stores up there past Ross Park Mall if you're heading up from the city, and you can check out more information. And if you, I know we have a couple people that are out of town, but there are definitely other locations as well in California, Florida, Ohio, Kentucky, uh, North Carolina, Tennessee, Utah. So uh, there might be one in your neighborhood as well out there in the Awesome Cast Nation. Go check them out, Core Life Eatery. Dot com and thank you once again for supporting the awesome cast guys so let's touch on some more stories here chilla and see what else is going on in the awesome world um one, I, one quick thing sorry on on the, the core life eatery mm -hmm. i'm very impressed with their um their site they actually have in the menu section they have an allergen chart mm. um and if you're I know some people that, that can't do gluten. Um, they're very cognizant of, of pretty much every major allergen, whether it be egg, fish, milk, peanuts, shellfish, soy, tree nuts, wheat, gluten. And then they also have everything um, listed as either uh, 
they also have it broken out by vegetarian and also vegan. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was, there was, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. I know some people have, uh, you know, I've heard of like allergies lately where they've really surprised me, <laughs> you know, but it's interesting too, because they also mark which things may have cross contamination, mm -hmm. which means that it could have come, come in contact with an allergen during the manufacturing process mm -hmm. and or at the facility. So I, and I know people that actually have cross contamination, like that are so allergic that cross contamination could be an issue. Yeah. Same so here. this is pretty darn cool. Awesome. CoreLifeEatery.com. Thanks, Jilla. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's get into, um, I saw this one uh, pop up. Like, you know, I have not played much of Marvel uh, Alliance. Well, you probably haven't because it hasn't been, like, they haven't released one since, like. Well, it hasn't been, it's been a while. And I actually, <laughs> yeah, it's been I, like rec 10 years. I recently picked up the one, I think, for the 360. I think, like, the first one, right? Um, mm -hmm. And there was a sequel. And, and actually, I was a big fan of X-Men Legends. Which is the spiritual, okay. like, you know, like, these are kind of the spiritual sequel to them, right? These mm -hmm. are like the four-player um, RPG, action RPG kind of thing. Um, and we played through at least the entirety of the first one. You know, I think we had a wavering of the three or four people that went through the entire game. Um, it's a lot easier now and not on a GameCube when you can do that online, I'm sure. <laughs> so, uh, but, but there's something different about this one. Right, Jilla? What's the um Oh that it's a Switch exclusive. It's a Switch exclusive. Yeah. Um and they're fo I, I was pretty impressed too that they're following along with the the uh, Infinity War storyline. So it's going to be a story of going up against Thanos and the Black Order allies. So the gameplay looks phenomenal. I think this is perfect for the for a portable device as well as you know, on the big screen, I am super, super excited to get this, not to mention that the developers working on this are the same studio behind Ninja Gaiden, that are Alive, and Neo. I've never played that, but um, Ninja, I was a huge fan of Ninja Gaiden and Dead or Alive. So um, making it the first Nintendo collaboration since Metroid Other M. So... Mm. Um, I'm, so, I, I will definitely be picking this up and I'm hoping that it works over there because you can do four four players at the same time. Um, I'm hoping this works over their online service as well. Awesome. Hey, another reason for me to want to pick up a Switch. Thanks. Thanks, Chilla. No problem. Thanks, Chilla. As, I, as I'm considering whether I need to buy a new Xbox because mine stopped working. Uh, but we, we talked about that before. Uh, it's like, mm, do I go for it? Mm, not yet. Not yet. Uh, <laughs> it's not like I have a shortage of things to play. Uh, but anyways, um, uh, Chilla, I've been digging, man, I've been digging some old games lately. I got my Nintendo going this week. I got my Genesis going this week. Man, <laughs> man, it feels good. It feels good. I got an adapter. We might be able to twitch some old stuff. Ah, it's going to be so much fun. Anyways, a lot of stuff coming up in the new year. Do you, do you, do you have an old Wii? I, oh, have no. a, I have an original Wii, yeah. Do you have... Um... What's the game that just came out? The Smash Brothers Ultimate or whatever? Dude, I pulled my Smash Brothers Wii case out, and there is no disc in it. How the <laughs> hell did I lose that? I am pissed. I am beyond pissed right now. Uh, I, I don't know if I lost that at a Chachi. Maybe somebody like snagged it from a Chachi Plays or something. But yeah, sadly, sadly, no. But I do have my GameCube version still. So there's that. Um, although I probably should, you know, instead of a Switch, I should just pick up a Wii U and start getting all those games, right? I don't, it doesn't pay off. You can't go buy like Mario games and Nintendo games. They're still like 70 bucks, 40 bucks to get anything like that. It's the unfortunate thing. Anyways, Street Fighter, while we're on the line, I was playing some, some Street Fighter Third Strike before the show too. Um, since I still have a 360 in here, thankfully, and has a couple games on it. But uh, I thought this was interesting. Um, it, it, Street Fighter V is going to display in ad uh, advertise or in game advertisements starting December 11th. Of course, Street Fighter V, I believe that is a PlayStation 4 exclusive. So unfortunately, I haven't gotten my hands on that one yet. I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's on the PC or something too. Um, they were talking about it potentially popping up. Uh, in the, uh, the Street Fighter is going to come to the Street Fighter V Arcade Edition to promote its uh, purchasable bundles, costumes, and Pro Tour. I, this doesn't, I mean, okay, it's a game you probably bought, but I, I feel like this has been coming because I, I picked up Injustice 2 a couple weeks ago, and it feels like it has all the like weird little loot stuff that was in the iOS version that was for free. So 
this doesn't really surprise me much at all. But what surprises me is that if you turn off the ads, you lose a certain amount of fight money and you lose access to additional costumes. Man. That, that well, <laughs> add me up then. <laughs> so, oh, here, the, kid, least, kid, the killer is, you, it's not like this game's free. No, no, it isn't. And they need this advertising to pay for it. Like, Nobody needs this advertising, Chilla, first of all. Well, but if you're, it, so if you're like a, what's the game? Marvel, Unli- is it Marvel Unlimited? I, I play it, I should know. Like Fight Force Marvel, or something? So, so I play Marvel Strike Force and I play Star Wars Heroes. Star yeah. Wars Heroes is an EA game and Strike Force is like FoxNet in concert with Seismic or something like that. And I'll be honest with you. I haven't purchased a power up. I haven't purchased anything. I even played, I have also used to play a lot. The um, Marvel champions, Mm -hmm. Christopher still plays it from time to time. Another game that I never invested a penny in, but spent hours and hours playing Mm -hmm. Um, to the point where like I joined clans, like, use different chat engines to make sure that I was part of the, like the, the group to make sure I, I helped out on a daily basis. Um, and, and I, I am totally 110% okay with the ads in those games because I don't buy anything in them. Mm-hmm. But if but I'm you didn't pay buying anything. the game but I, and I didn't pay anything, right. If I'm not paying anything, I expect there to be ads. If I'm paying for something, I expect it to be ad free or if it isn't ad free, I don't expect to lose something from not watching the ads. Mm -hmm. I I don't know. I hope. Yeah. That's where it gets fishy. Capcom isn't hurting for money here, guys. (laughs) (laughs) Nope. (laughs) Nope. It's just, um, this is called a, a new, new opportunities, you know? So, all right, let's see what else is going on here. Um, Oh, here's another video game one. This is an ad that I saw, and I want to caution you guys. I don't think this is on the up and up as far as uh, being connected with Nintendo and everything. If you're concerned about that, I would stay away from this. But in the meantime, I'm going to tell you about it anyways with that little precaution. So there, I was flipping through Instagram, and this is actually an ad I saw. Speaking of, right? Um, and this is called the Retro, the Retro Color 8-Bit iPhone Case. I feel like we've seen mods like this before. But this is, uh, they currently have it going for $37.99. It's over at RetroGamerStop.com. It is, it looks like an old school, old school Game Boy with a color screen, a little two-button layout like uh, you had on the old Nintendo uh, NES. And uh, it go, it's a case. It goes on your iPhone. You can select any iPhone from a 6S, um, 6S Plus, and regular all the way up to the iPhone X, XR Max, XRs. So they have all of those. And it includes um, several games. And again, this is where I think it gets a little fishy. This isn't, I, I don't think you can um, throw your own games on there. But in the meantime, the games it does include are Super Contra, Super Mario Brothers, Bomberman, Donkey Kong, Excite Bike, Kung Fu, Arkanoid, uh, Pac Man, Mario Brothers, uh, uh, Pinball, Track and Field, 1942, and many more. And now maybe the many more. There's, 30, there's 36 games. There's 36 games on that on the thing. Uh, yeah, this can't be legal. Uh, no, no. This is that. This is one of those sketchy kind of things where like, yeah, because it, it gets down to like uh, after Load Runner, you get games like what is Nuts Milk? I don't know. I have no clue. Or Star Frost, Frost, Star Frost. Um, some of these look familiar. They're kind of more arcade games and stuff. But then there's like five chess. So there's some filler games I feel like in this too. 36 games. It's such an odd number. Um, but if you want to try that out, and man, I kind of would love to try this thing out. Uh, but it's over there at retrogamerstop.com and is the retro color 8-bit iPhone case. That'd be kind of cool. I think I'd be a little <laughs> I don't know if I could I could have this on my phone all the time, but um have a cool addition to that too. So uh we'll see. We'll see. But I, like I said, it was it was in my Instagram. You know, not that because it was in my Instagram that makes it an up and up advertiser either, I guess. <laughs> but you know, 
All right, let's see what else we got here. Uh, you had something too for the uh, the the Fire Echo device. Oh, the the prices. Yeah, the, the, and so is, if you're, is, if is you're, it is it a fire sale, Chilla? I wouldn't call it a fire sale, but it, it's like they revisited their Black Friday pricing, and I'm guessing it'll run through Christmas. Mm -hmm. But there's there's a significant discount on a lot of their devices, so you can get an Echo Dot for 19.99. Um, the spot is down to 99 bucks. So you can put um, one in every bathroom. And it's not just the, the, um, a train echo devices. It's also the fire devices, including fire TV. Mm -hmm. We talked about the fire TV cube on the show last week. Uh, the fire sticks down to 25 bucks from 40. The fire stick two pack is down from 80 to 40. Um, the 4K stick is down from 50 to 35. The cube is down from 120 to 70. And they also included their recast devices, which is like their over-the-air DVR, as well as the Insignia Fire TV edition, HD Smart TV, mm -hmm. is down from 150 to 99. So if you're still wondering what to get the tech tech lover in your in your life, definitely pick up one of these devices because you can not only get the discount, but they're they're definitely great devices. Awesome. I'll have to check them out. Man, I feel I feel like we're going getting all into the the gift giving kind of mode for this, aren't we? So um hey I want to give a shout out. We do have another uh new sponsor. New new sponsor just jumped on this week again from the yeah, Jagoff Hala Day gift guide. This is uh our friends at Sprezatora. Um this is uh there you <clears throat> excuse me Sprezatora creates and, uh, and serves heritage inspired cooking for events in public um the the means uh Sprezatora means graceful execution and specialize in custom italian american menus made of fresh ingredients and locally sourced for uh their promise and commitment to sustainable business practice that support local growers visit Sprezatora.com for all your holiday needs that's s p r E Z Z A T U R A Sprezatora.com. And of course you can find the link over on our uh over on, on our uh, show notes as well to check them out. You may want to double check that link. Why is it not linked right? It's linked right, but it's not Oh, they're well, ma they're making databases happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, to double check the spelling on that, but we just got it like right before uh, airtime here. We'll correct the link and have it for you guys up on the chat too. So uh, keep an eye for that. Uh, anyways, <laughs> but thank you to them for uh, sponsoring the show. Go check them out uh, as well. So thought that logo was a little weird. <laughs> so. <laughs> Anyways, uh, what else we got here, Chilla? Man, I got it's all video game stuff this week for the most part, isn't it? There is, and I think it's just because it's that that time of the year. Just coming out, there was, and the video wasn't there an awards thing last week? Uh, there was, there was. Um, there was one where the the Russo brothers kind of trolled everybody by presenting an award, but not mentioning uh, the Avengers trailer that people were wondering if it was dropping. <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> I think a lot of video game, like I know the Marvel Alliance dropped during there. Mm. Um, I think there was another game that dropped um, during the awards show. So I, I'm guessing that's the reason why, because mm. um, it's not like the, the, a lot of that stuff's going to be out for Christmas, but it will be out in 2019. How would you like more levels for Doom? As long as I can play it on my my um, touch bar. And your I'm touch good. bar. <laughs> well, you might, because I think these are just like add-on levels for the most part. So John Romero, uh, he's that guy that went off and did some other stuff and some questionable ads. So for the 25th birthday of Doom, he's released 18 new levels. And we're talking about the original Doom from 25 years ago. Uh, it's an add-on for the 1993 game. It's called Sigil, and it serves as a, quote, spiritual successor to the classic shooter's fourth episode, Thy Flesh Consumed. Um, there's going to be nine single player story levels and nine multiplayer deathmatch levels. Now you can, uh, go download it for free or you can go get a special package 
uh, you know, for your shelf um, from Romero Games that you can pay for up to $166 for. Free the tour. interesting thing is the forty dollars standard edition comes on a sixteen gig USD USB drive that's I gotta see this themed like a floppy disk. Now you're interested. Now you're interested. If, if, if there's an episode title I've ever heard, themed like a floppy disk. Themed like a floppy disk. Um, if you're really truly committed, says this in Gadget article, you can drop one hundred sixty six dollars for the Beast box that includes everything from the standard edition. Plus an autographed box, a pewter statue of Romero's head on a spike. That was a scene from Doom Doom 2 you could find as an Easter egg. A coin, a t-shirt, and a a Christopher Lovell um, art print for it. Um, Jeez, this is great. Um, The new levels and the physical copies are expected to arrive in mid-February. And you can pre-order those uh, now. Oh, do, 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 do. yeah, that's that's cool. Um, but they're saying outside of Doom Eternal, um, which I think is the next release that's supposed to be coming, um, this is probably the biggest thing we're going to get for a 25th anniversary celebration of any any type, I guess. So, um, and I think Doom Eternal is coming. Let me double check that. They teased it last year at E3, so it could be coming much later in the year or, or the next year, if that's the case. Be interesting. Did you, did you go out to that shop? Because I mean, they have like old collectibles, like sealed Quake CD shareware, Seven Eleven edition is a hundred. What is that? It's not dollars. It's not pounds. Which site did you link through? It's the if you go to the RomeroGames.ie, there's a shop on there mm-hmm. where you can get like the old registered three and a half inch discs you can get autographed three and a half inch discs jeez how is he <laughs> I mean, he just has like a stack of them he's selling apparently i guess oh, games this is how he keeps going because what is he doing I, I don't think he makes a whole lot anymore game development where games is hope to dedicate fun and experienced game developers based in galway harland huh oh that was probably irish then whatever their deal is. Yeah, but they don't use, I can't remember what their, I don't know what money they use. Ooh, there it is. Here's the Doom floppies. There you go. <laughs> the, the, the way, I never seen Doom on a five and a half inch or five and a quarter uh, floppy. There's no five and a quarter inch floppies, are there? Or the five, the, the, what is it? what's that? Oh, that's Euro. Okay. You mean three and a half inch floppies? Three and a half? They weren't really floppies. They the big, were no, the bigger floppy floppies. They're showing them on the on the big floppy floppies. Those, Where? Those are the five inches. I'm under games. Or museum, I guess. Oh, museum. Okay. Yes. Anyways, now we're. I was under shop. Now we're poking. Oh that. yeah. Oh. There's some cool stuff over there. We're going to poke around that a little bit. Okay, and lastly, um, hey, Epic Games is going to sell games more than their own, I guess. Uh, they're looking to do uh, basically become a Steam competitor because we need more of this chilla, right? Because we need the hey man, if everybody's going to give me free games as part of this, I'm down with it because um, I have like a bunch of free games over on Origin, over on the Twitch thing. Um, sure, okay. <laughs> so, um, but I mean, it's another place, and I guess I don't know. I, I think it's okay that Steam has competition, but I, I think it's fine. But it, it's one of those things. <laughs> I feel like we're getting into the um, I have to subscribe to Netflix and I have to subscribe to HBO Go and I have to subscribe to Hulu. And no, I no, have no, 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 no. We're going with the I have these mo- movies over on iTunes. I have these movies over on uh, Ultraviolet. I have these movies on Vimeo. <laughs> Viv- Vivo? 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 Vi- yeah, Vivio. Vimeo. Vimeo, thank you. No, not Vimeo. Is it? No, no Vimeo is v- the old Vivio is the thing YouTube. that I, I put stuff on. Well, it's actually what we do VODs through and are on demand and everything uh, now. But um, but no, that's that's what I feel like it is. It's, it's like, oh, like where is the movies anywhere of video games? Right? <laughs> that's exactly what I was going to say. You want to make a million bucks? Go invent something that aggregates them all. Seriously, you know, that, that has all my license keys in one place, right? Because like I have mm-hmm. all of those... 
I have, I mean, even even like when you go to Humble Bundle, it's like, okay, I have everything on the PC is over on Steam. And then everything, uh, then I have the Android store and the iOS store, but that's not as big of a deal, of course. Uh, but still, like, or this is over on the Mac store. And, you know, like, I, I like Steam because I buy the thing and it's there, right? Like, I've rebought games just so I don't have to dust off a disc. <laughs> so, and it'll mostly work with the new software. So, anyways. Uh, <laughs> hey, want to give a shout out before we get out of here with to our friends at Slice on Broadway. Uh, of course, feeding everybody that's in here. We got more people in here. Not all of them are on the show, but producer Missy is in here now. So she gets to partake again. Uh, our good friend supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Up here at Beachview, right in the neighborhood. The original, the OG. And as I've been saying on other shows, if you have a Broadway in your town, get a picture and hit them up at PGH underscore slice and tell them there needs to be a slice on my Broadway. Help them with their uh, global expansion here. Carnegie PA, West End of Pittsburgh, and PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, go check them out, and be you can be hungry, too. And while I'm at it, I'm going to give a shout-out to our friend Alexander Cars. Uh, check out him for logos, websites, and more. Putting together a puzzle of design and media. From branding to print to all and digital projects, Alex can do logos, merchandise, websites, and even photo and video products. Uh, projects uh check them out at alexandercars.com and alexcars.media to get started that's k-a-h-r-s so thank you to those guys for all supporting the show uh east end not west end did i write the wrong thing there hold on a minute no i put it wrong in the ad that's my bad that is on the east end there should be one in the west end damn it we'll fix that for next week uh but (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> all right uh there's got there's some events coming up uh, of course next week is going to be our end of year special chill i imagine you'll be here in the studio uh we'll try to get everybody we can in here i should probably start sending some invites out uh for that but we still usually get a bunch of people look at uh, what we did last year for our um kind of guesses for the new year and make fun of some of our selections right yes so um, also this week, uh, Pittsburgh Current is going to be um, again going on on Thursday morning. I know they just announced the guest before I came on the air here. And if I had a moment, I could bring that up for you. Uh, but uh, go check them out. We've had some great conversations over there. And new iPad, and it still doesn't respond sometimes to search. Uh, <laughs> but always a good conversation. 10 a.m., Pacific time over on the Pittsburgh current Facebook page. When we record that, you can drop in the chat room. Um, we have with us this week. Oh, that's last week's um, F doc Harris. He's a lawyer and donut salesman with super bakery. What a combination. So that's- did you upgrade the OS on your, on your iPad? Did I, I think I did when I first got it back. Yes. Okay. Why? Cause you were just saying you were having problems with search. Um, oh, just, yeah, it, it kind of paused a little bit, but like Facebook seems to pause every once in a while. So we had to check the update again. Anywho, um, aside from that, let's see, there's some wrestling. Uh, Thrifty Podcast is having a holiday special. I believe that's eight o'clock on Thursday. Check out their page for that stream. And also, uh, Comic Book Pit is going to have a, uh, I believe a milestone, milestone 200th episode on Sunday in here. What? 300. I was going to say it had to be more than 200. Trying to make them younger. Uh, but 300th <laughs> episode coming up on uh, Sunday. I believe that's going to be around 2 p.m. They'll be going live on their channel. A lot of stuff broadcasting from Sorgatron Media this week. It's going to be a lot of fun stuff, man. So uh, check it out. Chill out. Maybe you're going to roll in for some of these. At least check them out online. I'm, I will definitely be checking out the comic book pit one, and I'll try to roll in when I can. There you go. And, of course, a lot of holiday stuff next week. Stay tuned for that. The um sexy talented dude christmas special will be next wednesday evening and the uh yes the std christmas special it's the, it's going to be the fourth year we've had them in for a christmas special and i swear i'm not drinking we're not gonna have a repeat of last year guys uh but anyways uh thank you john chichilla at chilla on the twitters thank you have a good week thank you thank you producer missy and thank you everybody in the chat room uh, including Dave Ponder has been updating us on everything we've been getting wrong throughout the show. Thank you so much for that. Go check out the Tiny Shutter podcast uh, for that. Thank you. You have been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week.
This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.